So, now we're moving on to slightly, I would say, bolder styles. Yeah. A little bit more rich and opulent. And this is due to the fact that they will have been made with oxidative aging. So instead of being covered in yeast and going through the biological aging process, these have basically been left to do their own thing, open in a barrel. That's it, lots of air, lots of lovely oxygen. So, what have you got? Ha ha! <laughs> <laughs> again, right. So, I'm going to start talking about this one. So this is a, a sherry called Oloroso. Now, with Oloroso, um, when sherry gets made, you start off, as you were talking earlier on, you, we start off with a kind of a base Palomino wine. Then we leave it a little bit and see if there's this flaw develops we were talking about, a bacterial flaw, or that, that yeasty, weird, horrible, kind Sounds of sounds awful right. flaw yeah. that makes Fino what it is. But if that doesn't develop, then as you were saying, well, it's open to the oxygen. And they make that decision very early doors and purposefully kill the floor by adding extra alcohol to it. So that's Therefore what it's they... called fortified wine. Whereas you? Aha! This is an Amontillado. And Amontillado, I kind of think of as the Darwinian failure because um, sort of the early stages, it was officially meant to be um, a Fino sherry. And they thought, yeah, it can handle the floor and the floor starts eating it and covering it up and it starts going through that process. But then, for some inexplic inexplicable reason, and I've attended like a Montiardo seminars because I'm really cool, um, for some inexplicable reason, it just suddenly stops producing, like the floors just die. So then, it effectively ages for the last two or three years, after having two or three years under floor, the rest of the time in barrel for the next two, three, four years or whatever, is exposed to oxygen. And so you therefore get this really weird changeling of a fortified wine where you get a little bit of the tanginess and a little bit of the saline residue. But then you're also then starting to get the warmth of the oak and balsamic notes. And it's a, yeah, it's, it's a really interesting hybrid. So you can already see just from where yeah. we poured, you see, have a look at the difference in colors on that. And I think again, you know, the, 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 those nutty flavours, we're moving away from almonds, we're moving into more kind of, well, I've got kind of walnut in that one, and Amontillado is quite famous for being quite hazelnutty. Exactly, it's not uh, quite as, yeah, exactly, but you're getting a bit more of um, uh, Demerara brown sugar. Yeah. I think you can get away with slightly uh, slightly heavy styles of cheese and, uh, and the olives still, because you can, especially with the Amontillado, you still got that salinity. Absolutely, so like the acidity and cheese it would like still be able to match with the salinity in the... Whereas with, with this one here I'm thinking kind of you can get some like really heavy kind of sausages and, and uh, you know some Foie gras. Really, yeah, really go nuts with the protein kind of thing, really big fat bastard things to have because um, there's so much flavour in that, really body, fantastic. The first time I tried, uh, the first time I tried Oloroso was at this um, was at this wine tasting event, and uh, the guy who was doing it was a guy called Javier Hidalgo, and he said that his mom has a saying for Amontillado, which is over there. Uh, she said, "Always have uh, one before eleven and eleven before one." And she's, <laughs> and she's made it to ninety-five, so she's got to be doing something, right? Yeah, it's so, a good woman. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. listen to that. Yeah. So, well, cheers to her cheers. and cheers to these styles as well, eh? Chin. Cheers.